it's Ty Bug, and we're finally back in the kitchen. I feel like it's been so long, especially since I've been able to stand. <laughs> so today we are making maple bacon cheddar biscuits. And the recipe I got is from Damn Delicious. I found it on Pinterest, so I'll link that down below. And I have all my supplies gathered here. And it seems like it's going to be a fairly easy recipe. I've... I don't think I've ever made biscuits, like, from scratch. I am a very big supporter of Pillsbury. <laughs> I get all their biscuits, their crescent rolls, all of that. So this will be an adventure. And, you know, biscuits are, like, a staple of Thanksgiving dinner. So I just, I had to make biscuits. So I'm going to be making them, some with the bacon and some without, because not everyone in the household is our meat eaters. So it's going to be for everyone. So let's get started. So, first thing I need to do is preheat the oven for 450 degrees. And then I lined my baking sheet with parchment paper already. And then I have to cook the bacon. So, those are the first things we'll be doing. I need to dice the bacon, so I'll show you guys that. But I'm not going to show you cooking the bacon. I feel like everyone knows how to cook bacon. And on the website, it said to like cook the bacon for 6 to 8 minutes. So, that's what's happening. So the bacon I'm using is Jimmy Dean Premium Bacon Hickory Smoked. It was the bacon that was on sale at Don Quixote at the time, so I just got that. And the recipe calls for eight pieces of bacon, but since I'm only going to be putting bacon in half of them, I'm only going to use four pieces of bacon. And then I'm just going to dice that up on this little cooking sheet I have. I don't really feel like I need to adjust this, but I'm not wearing makeup today because I don't want to. Nice time. I would be so amazed if that actually worked. Okay, so while that's baking, I'm going to add in my dry ingredients. Ignore my apron, I didn't want to ruin my Maleficent shirt. So in a bowl, I'm going to combine the flour, cheese, Baking powder, salt, and baking soda. What? Where'd my baking powder go? I didn't grab baking powder. Remember how I failed my souffle pancakes because I didn't have baking powder? Turns out we have two things of baking powder in the house. Hi, Mika. I'm kind of going to shake it to level instead of compacting it. That's my bacon. I didn't bake it. I'm frying the bacon. I, I don't know why. Let me check that real fast. That was two cups of flour, Ty. Remember that. Ah, Dios mío. Okay, some of it's gotten very fried. Some of it has not. I'm going to let that cook a little bit more. Three. Four. I probably should have used the bigger bowl. See? Okay. I did my four cups of flour. Now cheese is one cup of sharp cheddar cheese. A little extra cheese doesn't hurt anybody. And baking powder, it's four tables, teaspoons, four teaspoons of baking powder. I have to do four of these. One. Let me check my bacon real fast. Woo, they're done. Okay, those are done. I'm just gonna let them sit because they're full of oil. Or maybe I should take them out of the oil. I should probably take them out of the oil. Ah. I'm gonna line it with paper. I'm gonna take my bacon out of the oil. I kind of made it crispy. <laughs> kind of burnt. <laughs> Oi. Ow. Okay, so that got crispy a lot faster than I thought it would. Um, don't judge me. I mean, it's bacon. Burnt. <laughs> I may still put it in the biscuits. Who knows? Okay, so I did one thing of baking powder. I need to do more. But it's like all hard in here. Now for the salt. And it is one and one half teaspoon of salt. Is it okay if I just eyeball one half? That looks like one half. If it's a little bit salty, that's why. And then the baking soda. How much baking soda? One teaspoon baking soda. 
I'm supposed to add the bacon into this, but I'm going to add in the bacon last. I wonder if it tastes any good because I've made it charred. I mean, I have bacon bits from salads. I can just put that in. I think, I think that's what I'm going to do. It tastes extra smoky. And now I'm going to mix this. And I have to grate butter. Oh, oh I forgot to freeze butter. Oh, man. Um, it's going to be refrigerated butter. But it's unsalted butter that was supposed to be frozen, but it's just refrigerated in our case. And it is three-fourth cups. Um, I have one half cup, so one half cup would be, I don't want to do math, one half cups would be two fourth cup, and then I would need to do another third. Does that math sound right, Mom? One half cup is two fourths, and to get three fourths, I just do one half cup and one third. No, that's not right. I need another one fourth. Oh, then I do a one fourth. Ha 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 I gotta talk through my math sometimes. And I'm not quite sure why it has to be grated instead of just put in there, but I'll follow instructions. I really should put this in a bigger bowl before I continue. <gasps> Sorry, Mika, you have white fur now. Oh, what a disaster. I understand why it needs to be frozen so it doesn't melt in your hand. But we didn't think that far ahead, did we? There has to be a better way to do this. This is so gross. Ow, oh, okay, that's it. Get off. gonna be extra smooth. Oh, I'm such a doofus. I could have had it like that the whole time. Okay, next I need to do the one-fourth. One-fourth cup. I'm gonna say that's the correct amount of butter, and we're just gonna believe it is. Power of belief. I don't know what to do with the rest of this butter. It's kind of gross. I can use it for melted butter. In a separate bowl now, we're going to mix together our buttermilk and our four tablespoons of maple syrup. I don't know why buttermilk comes in such a big thing because I don't know what else you can use buttermilk for, but hopefully I can find other things to use it for before this goes bad. And that is, uh, how much buttermilk? How much? One and one half cup. One cup. I'm just gonna use the Kirkland maple syrup and that's four tablespoons. Four. And I'll be needing this again. I want to lick it. Okay, and now I need to whisk that. Whisk. You guys can't really see, but it's like turning a brownish color. This is dangerous. I'm going to drop it. I know it. Okay, and then I just add that to the flour mix. So I don't know if I'm supposed to mix this because the next step is just to knead it. So I'm assuming I need to mix it first. Maybe not with this utensil, but I've already started with this utensil. Yeah, that was a mistake. Honestly, I don't know why it told me to preheat the oven beforehand because I have to freeze these. So I'm going to turn off the oven, I think. Maybe I am just supposed to mix it with my hands. Let me get my lightly floured surface. Oh man, I'm making a mess. It's okay. Guess I'm going to have to be sweeping in here later. And I'm just going to use my hands because it's clean. Ah, 
surprise you all. I'm making a mess. And here comes Mika as soon as I say I'm making a mess. Not sticking together. Stay inside, cheese. I guess I didn't really think that I'm like essentially making bread. Like biscuits are bread. And I didn't think about kneading bread as part of making a biscuit. So this better taste good for all this work. I don't want to over knead it because I feel like that will affect it, right? Look at it. Okay, I'm gonna make it into little biscuits now. Oh, but there's butter clumps. Should I work on that? Nah. How thick should I make these? One. A little baby. I'm putting that on my parchment paper over here. It's probably too big, but whatever. It said knead three to four times, but I don't know what that means. Two. Four. So I don't know about you guys, but I don't have a big freezer and I need to freeze these for 15 minutes before I can bake them. So I'm gonna have to be doing a lot of increments of this. So my first batch will be five without the bacon and I'm gonna go freeze that and then put that in the oven. I'll come back to add in the bacon and then I'll show you the final product. So yeah, I mean, I have challenges, but I'm sure this is like a very basic recipe. So see you guys soon. Okay, so I have the first batch in the oven, but I just wanted to take a moment to say sorry for the angles that I shot at. It's been a very long time since I've done cooking videos, so I kind of forgot the angle I used to shoot at. I know before it was more like at this angle, I think it was, so you could see more what I was doing on the counter. Unfortunately, I don't have an island in my kitchen, so it's very hard to shoot things face on. So next time I do a cooking video, which will be next week, cause I'm gonna be doing all cooking for the month of November with uh, my video games on Thursdays. Um, <laughs> I'll hopefully be better by then, but thank you so much for watching anyways. I will see you guys once all the biscuits are done cooking. And my first batch of biscuits are done. Look at them. I'm so proud of them to like little babies. The cheese looks so good. So then there's a topping we can make for it, which is melted butter mixed with maple syrup. I'm not gonna make that right now, but um, what the recipe is, is it's 
for the topping, it's um, two tablespoons of melted butter and the two tablespoons of maple syrup. So that's what you do for the topping. I'm not going to do that right now because I'm going to eat this with some soup soon. But I will taste this on camera for you guys. I'm going to take a bite from my babies. Let's... They're still pretty hot. I just took them out of the oven and put them on the cooling racks. So let's... Let's just burn. Wait. Got to get the good thumbnail. Okay, I understand the need for the topping now, because I wouldn't say it's dry, but like, you can't really taste the maple syrup in it. It kind of just tastes like a cheese biscuit. Not even cheese, it kind of just tastes like a biscuit with a, a drizzle of cheese on it. So the topping will probably give it a little bit of maple syrup. So I will check in with you guys once I'm eating dinner with some maple syrup on these maybe. I don't know, I'm going to put this in soup, so maybe not the maple syrup. I don't know, if it, you don't see me again, I didn't put the topping on it. But yeah, I do recommend these for Thanksgiving. They're so good. Definitely put the topping on it. So that is all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you guys try out this recipe. Once again, it is by Damn Delicious. And I'll have them linked down below. It will have the um, ingredients, how to cook it, all of that. And you guys can follow along on this video if you want to. Have a little laugh at my misery. <laughs> um, I will be filming uh, cooking videos for the rest of November just to help you guys out on Thanksgiving. I will be having alternatives to an all turkey based dinner. It will be uh, fish based because we're pescatarians mostly in this family. So leave a comment down below if anything you want to comment. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you guys on Thursday. Bye!